Hello Matrix and welcome to the seventh of ten videos for Grade 12 Functions brought to you by the Answer Series. This seventh video introduces you to the concept of a logarithm. The logarithm of a number is the power to which the base must be raised to give that number. Now that sounds like a complete mouthful so let's have a look at a couple of examples and then we'll refer back to the definition and see if we can make sense of it. If I ask you for log to the base 2 of 8, that means 2 to the power what gives me 8 as an answer. So if I think 2 to the power what gives me 8 as an answer, well I know that 2 cubed is 8. So that means that log to the base 2 of 8 is 3. In the next example, 3 to the power what gives 81 as an answer. So 3 to the power what gives 81 as an answer. Well, it's 3 to the power 4 is 81. So that means that log to the base 3 of 81 is 4. If I look at 1.3, 5 to the power what gives 5 as an answer, it's 1. 2 to the power what gives 32 as an answer, 5. So if I look back at my definition, the log of a number is the power to which the base must be raised to give that number. So what power must I raise 2 to to give me 8? This must be 3 to the power what gives me 81. So if I go to 1.5, 3 to the power what is 1. Well, it must be 3 to the 0. 1.6, 2 to the power what gives me a quarter. Well, I know 2 squared is 4, so if I need a quarter, it must be 2 to the minus 2. In 1.7, 9 to the power what gives me 3? Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and in exponents, the square root is to the power a half. So 9 to the half is equal to 3. If I look in logarithmic form, the number has to be positive. I cannot take the log of a negative number. The base has to be positive and it cannot equal 1. The answer you get can be any real number. So your answer can be positive, negative, zero, fractions, decimals, any real number. There are restrictions on the number that you can take and the base but the answer can be any real number. Now, exponential form and logarithmic form. You have got to be able to swap from one to the other and vice versa very easily. So you need to know how do you get from logarithmic form to exponential form. a to the n equals b. How do you get from exponential form to logarithmic form? Well, there's my a to the n equals b. Now note, if you get no base given to you, so you just get log x, that means log to the base 10 of x. So if there's no base, it's implied base 10. In example number 2, I'm going to ask you to complete the table. So what I've given you is I've given you a column with exponential form and a column with logarithmic form. And what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to fill in all the gaps. So you need to practice going from one form to the other and then we'll look at them together. There are the answers. Notice in the first few, 2 to the power 4 equals 16. There it is. 3 to the power 2 equals 9. There it is. And you can pause the video and check the others yourself.
Example number three, I ask you to solve for x. I've given them all to you in log form. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. You're going to change them into exponential form and then solve them. Try them yourself and then we'll do them together. In 3.1, I change to exponential form. What to the power 3 is 125? It's 5, so x is 5. 3.2, I change to exponential form. Solve for x. 3.3, change to exponential form. 8 is 2 cubed. 16 is 2 to the 4. And I solve for x. 3.4, Either the first bracket could be 0, or the second bracket could be 0, and I solve for x. Remembering that if there's no base, it's base 10. What happens if we need to use the calculator? Well, if the base is 10, I can use that button that just reads log. If I have any other base, that is the button I use. And note, if you don't have that second button on your calculator, you will need to know the formula that log to the base a of b is equal to log b over log a, and you will need to enter it as a fraction. In example number four, I ask you to solve for x correct to two decimal places. So that tells you you're going to have to use a calculator for it. So I take two to the x equals three, and I change it into log form. Then on my calculator, I press the button, log with a little square and then the big square, two for the base, right arrow to move across, three for the number, equals and I get that x is equal to 1,58. Example number 5. I've given you four examples and asked you to solve for x. All of them need you to use the calculator, so pause the video, try them, and then we'll do them together. In 5.1, Change to log form, use your calculator. 5.2, change to log form, and solve for x. 5.3, change to log form, and solve for x. 5.4, the first thing I have to do is divide by 3, then I change to log form, and I solve for x. The last example I want to do is to take two examples from finance and see how we can use logarithms in that. So you need to remember the following formulae. A is equal to P into 1 plus I to the power N is your compound interest formula. And A is equal to P into 1 minus I to the N is your depreciation on a reducing balance. So use those two formulae in these two examples. Pause the video, try them yourself, and then we'll do them together. In 6.1, I ask you how long it will take for a sum of money to double itself. So I let the initial amount be P, final amount is 2P. Remember that 2P divided by P is 2. Change to log form and use your calculator. In 6.2, the car is originally worth 200,000. It's then worth 50,000. Change to log form and use your calculator. You should now understand how to work with logarithms. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like 
and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.